Keyframing is the foundation for all motion graphics. It's what makes graphics move. I'm going to teach you keyframing in CapCut, but virtually everything I share with you applies to nearly every motion graphics or editing program out there, whether it's Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or the dozens and dozens of other programs available out there. Once you get it, you'll get it for all the apps. So please pay attention. A keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. Properties like color, watch me fade from vibrant color to black and white right before your very eyes. Scale, like how my face is slowly getting uncomfortably large considering the size of my nose. And position, the location of something on the screen, like how this butterfly seems to be just obsessed following my finger or volume. So I don't have to shout to talk louder than the music. You can just keyframe the volume so over time the music gets a little quieter and then you can just hear me speak at my normal levels and hear the music peacefully playing in the background. In CapCut, you can also keyframe filters, which I'm also going to show you how to do. All of the elements I use in this video are linked in the description below, so go ahead and stop and download them right now. I mean, like, do it! Let's start with color. Let's grab a video clip, bring it to the timeline, and I hit Shift Z so it fills the timeline. I just want this color clip to slowly fade to black and white. How do I do that? I simply go to this panel up here, click on adjustment, and I click on basic. I scroll down to saturation. These diamonds on the side of this panel are used to set keyframes. Remember, a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. We talked about a few properties, but you can see that there are tons of properties you can modify within CapCut or any editing or motion graphics program. For example, we can change the color temperature over time or just, you know, all at once if we wanted to. We can change the hue of an image, the saturation, the brightness, all kinds of stuff. All we're going to do right now is make this go to black and white. So let's say starting it right here at, you know, four seconds in, we wanted to go from saturated with color to unsaturated black and white. We set a keyframe here. We want it to start the starting point where the change is going to begin, the point in time where we're going to start to change a property. And we're going to go forward. I don't know, just a little bit. I'm going to move forward a tiny bit here. And I don't need to set this next keyframe because I set a keyframe for saturation. If I adjust saturation, it will automatically add another keyframe. And you can see it added both here and here without me even pressing the keyframe button. Watch this. I drag it all the way to the left to make it black and white. Bam, it's blue keyframe here and a keyframe here. And now over the course of this period of time, this image goes from color to black and white. And I'm going to do it again. I want you to watch the slider because it's you're watching it happen live. Watch this. Bam, it's sliding to black and white. And what if I wanted to go to black and white faster? What do you do? It's like, Oh, how do I speed this up? Slow. What, do, what do you do? It's actually pretty easy to make it go from color to black and white faster. You just move the keyframes closer together. So I just click on this right one and drag it closer to the left. And now over the course of how many frames is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, like nine frames. Watch this. Color, bam, all the way to black and white. Want it to take a long time, I just drag this keyframe farther away. So it'll slowly fade to black and white over time. And I'm just gonna speed it up by dragging it. And it gets to black and white here. And then after this keyframe, it's the end of the change in that property. So it's just going to stay black and white for the rest of this entire video clip, unless I do something else. Now, something to take note of is that if I modify, let's say, hue, hey, it didn't it didn't add a keyframe. Why didn't hue add a keyframe? I already had a keyframe there. It's because I only had a keyframe here for one property just saturation. I did not have a keyframe for a hue. I'm going to click on this so you can see like, oh, there's only a keyframe for saturation, not a keyframe for anything else. So if I wanted to modify any other property, such as brightness, I would need to set a keyframe for brightness to start the change, move my playhead, adjust the brightness, and then it will add a keyframe because I adjusted that property. I hope that's really clear for you. If you can see any value whatsoever in learning about keyframes, hit that subscribe button and whack the bell so you get notifications. You don't miss on any of my future videos because I cover super important stuff like this in, in every single video. The beauty of what I've taught you so far is it's exactly the same for any other property you want to modify. So let's let's do another one. Let's drag this clip of me to the timeline, Trevor Keyframing. You have it because you downloaded it, right? And you could do whatever you want with these things. I don't care. Share them all over the world, all over social media, and make me famous with your, your big YouTube channel. So let's listen to this. This is a slow zoom to add interest to an otherwise kind of boring shot. So that's the first thing we're going to do with this. We're going to modify scale. We're also going to modify position on this one. A slow zoom. How do you do a slow zoom? Well, we position our playhead where we want this zoom to start. In this case, we want it to start at the beginning of this clip. I'm going to hit the up arrow so I can get to the beginning of the clip in one 
keystroke, which is super helpful to learn the keystrokes. I'm going to go to video basic and I'm going to set keyframes for scale and position. So I'll click scale and position. It's got a keyframe there. That's one keyframe for both of those properties. Then I'm going to move to the end of this section of the clip after I'm done speaking and we're going to slowly scale in on me before it cuts. You can see there's a cut there. So we're going to just go ahead and I'm just going to get rid of that rest of that stuff. How do I get rid of this? What's the keystroke? If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that the keystroke to add a cut right here where the playhead is and remove everything after the cut is W. Bam. And again, learn the keystrokes. You go faster. And I'm going to go back one frame and not going to add a keyframe here. Well, I am, but I'm not going to add it by pressing these buttons again. I'm just going to scale me up and I'm going to position me down a little bit. Why? Because for things to look professional and for the eyes to be able to follow, you want things to stay in the same place, like especially a face. If you're zooming in on a face, you want people to be able to follow it. So keep the eyes in the same place. That's why I lowered it there. So we adjusted scale and position. And over time, it's going to go from this all the way to this. And let's just watch it to see if it worked. This is a slow zoom to add interest to an otherwise kind of boring shot. <laughs> We just keyframe scale and position. Piece of cake. You're, you're getting it, right? If we wanted that to happen faster, what would we do? Pause it. Think, what do you do to make that go faster? Well, all you do is you put the keyframes closer together and then it'll go a little faster. Watch this. This is a slow zoom. Bam. For the next clip, let's, let's have a listen and see what we need to do to it. And this is a quick zoom to get your attention. How do we do a quick zoom, do you think? Well, this is a quick zoom. Let's have it go right there. So after I say quick zoom, I'm going to add a keyframe for scale and position again. And then I can go forward just like four frames. One, two, three, four. Just using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And remember, I don't have to click position and keyframe, but I could, by the way, I could hit scale and position and now adjust it, or I could not take them away. And just by adjusting scale, look at that, it added a keyframe for scale, but didn't add one for position yet. How do I make it add one for position? Well, I changed my position and bam, it added a keyframe for position. So let's see what this looks like with a quick zoom. And this is a quick zoom to get your attention. Now that I have your attention, if you'd taken my course edit with Trevin Master CapCut, you already know how to do all of this stuff. So stop dinking around and wasting your time. You can take a year or two off the learning curve by taking my course and learning how to edit in a day or two and make videos that your millions of adoring fans, your, your soon to be millions of adoring fans, will actually want to watch. So go ahead and click on this link right here or click on the link in the description below and start editing like a boss. Invest in yourself. For this next section, we're going to focus on position and make it a little more obvious that we're changing position. To do that, we're going to use this clip of me following a butterfly. Do you, you see the butterfly? Well, let's go up here to stickers and we got lots of butterflies here. How about this guy? That's blue and pretty and it already moves. We're going to drag to the timeline. It's a little too short. It's going to make it last the duration. And in the beginning, I'm looking at the butterfly over here, but the butterflies, he's facing the wrong way. How do we flip him around? You just make sure he's highlighted. Click this guy right here, the mirror and bam, he's flipped around. And I'm going to maybe rotate him up a little bit, make him a little bit smaller. And we're just going to make this pretty simple. So I'm tracking him right here. My eyes are kind of looking at him and I'm going to just have him fly over there. How, how do you think I would do that? Well, my playhead is positioned at the very first frame of the butterfly. I'm going to set a keyframe for position. Then I'm going to position my playhead where I want this butterfly to end up. And he flew kind of all the way off screen, I think. So we'll just go to this last keyframe and I'm going to click on this button here so I can see a little bit past the frame. And I'm just going to drag him all the way over to there off the screen and without messing with it any further let's see if we got pretty close if it looks kind of like i'm following that butterfly Ooh. yeah CapCut does have built-in animations, which allow you to do kind of cooler things you can do with these basic keyframe things, but the animations have way less control. So they probably wouldn't let you smoothly fly a butterfly across the screen. They'll let you do something more fancy. Like let's go ahead and undo what we just did, get rid of those keyframes and try one of these built-in animations. We are clicked on the butterfly. We just click on animation and we have these options for this butterfly to appear in, for it to go out, for it to loop. So we could have it, you know, bounce in. We could have it spring in, which is pretty similar. We could have it fade in. We can adjust how long it takes for it to, say, slide up. Ooh. We can also have it leave the screen by clicking on out and let's say slide down and then bam, whoop, slides, slides down. That, that went kind of fast. I'm just going to make that longer by dragging that slider to the left and now it'll slide down more slowly. 
So those are cool. It also has loops that'll just stuff. It'll just keep doing over and over again. I'm going to get rid of the out by clicking this none, then click on in and click none to get rid of the in animation that we already set up. And we're just going to click on loop and see what some of these loops do. We can have it just sit there and jiggle the whole time. We can have it wiper. We can have a scroll up and down over and over again. So it's got some, you know, potentially useful things that you can do. These are pretty limited for the stickers. If you want more options, let's first get rid of this loop by making sure on loop, making sure this highlight and hit none. So now this thing's doing nothing. But if you want more animation options, then you need to treat this like a video clip. So this is kind of a hack and you can do this for text, anything. We can just right click on this butterfly and choose create compound clip. And now CapCut thinks it's a video clip. So if I click on it and go to animation, there are way more things it can do. So if you want more options, you got you got stuff right here. It's going to click on a couple. These are way fancier. Most of them are, you know, some are spin up blinds, which does almost nothing. Some of the cool ones are these zoomy ones. So, you know, this might be useful to you. So it's kind of good to know how to how to cheat the system. And, and a lot of editing is knowing how to cheat the system and do things that it wasn't specifically designed exactly to do, but you can, you can make it do pretty easily. What about volume? How do you keyframe levels? Well, let's go ahead and drop in some voiceover of me. Drop in some fishing boat footage of this fishing boat. This is These are actually cool shots. I shot this down in California a while ago. And let's see, I think the coolest one would be this one where it goes around the front. That's kind of cool. We'll use that one. So I'm just going to type the letter. How do I add a cut and delete all of that? Letter Q, bam. And so it looks like that. Maybe we'll just adjust it a little bit so we get right where it's going over the front of the boat. Letter Q again again. Dun, 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 dun. But now we need some music. So I got some levels to adjust over time using what? Keyframes. So I'm going to click on audio. I'm going to type in ocean. And we have one that looks like the ocean remix. That looks kind of cool. Let's add it to the timeline with this little plus sign here. And we're going to trim it up. So all that goes away with the letter W that you know so well because you're learning all the keystrokes. And I'm going to zoom way in here. And you can see that the music doesn't start on the first frame. I want it to start right away. I don't want silence in the beginning. I'm just going to click and drag drag this over to trim it up a tiny bit, drag this the rest of the way. And now we've got, if I could do it all over again, I'd be a fisherman. Like you can barely hear me. The music's too freaking loud. So how do I fix it? Well, let's just lower all the music, you know, just by dragging that guy down to, I don't know, minus 12, 13, somewhere around there. Let's test see if that sounds good. If I could do it all over again, I'd be a fisherman. Maybe even a little bit too loud still. There's no keyframes yet. We're just lowering the music. Let's, we're at minus 8.2. Let's go down to, I don't know, minus, let's go to minus 14.3. How's that sound? If I could do it all over again, I'd be a fisherman. That's pretty great. I usually end up dropping music if I'm speaking to like minus 15 to minus 20. This is, you know, soft music, so it can be a tiny bit louder. And I want it to fade up. I don't want it to abruptly go loud because that sounds bad. So to make it sound good, we slowly fade it up over the course of, you know, a few frames. So right as I'm ending my speaking, I can see it here because the waveforms are dipping down. That's the end of it. I'm going to click on the ocean, the music track here. I'm going to click on bass basic and set a keyframe right here. Then I go forward a few frames by hitting the arrow key a few times. And I want the music to come back up because after I'm done speaking, you gotta hear something. You wanna hear the music. So to hear the music, I just drag this guy back up. You know, this is zero probably will work and watch how this works. If I could do it all over again, I'd be a fisherman. Right? CapCut has a ton of filters. You can find them by clicking on, oddly enough, filters. The filters are used to add a color grade, a look to your image. And over here in Night Scene, we have one that's kind of fun called Black Gold. I can add it to the clip itself and it'll look like that. Makes it all kind of muted and cool. Or I could drag it to the top of everything and it'll affect the clips beneath it. And I'm going to drag this and make it last iteration of this clip. And, you know, we could just leave it like that and have that kind of cool look for the whole thing. But what if I wanted to start normal and then go to this Black Gold? gold look right when the music goes up. Well, to do that, we first need to make sure the filter is highlighted and we can see up here that we have the ability to add a keyframe for the strength. And with these filters, the property you can modify is the strength. All the way up looks like that. All the way out, down looks like that. And, you know, maybe you want something in between. So you can adjust that over time. So let's say we want it to go to all the way up while the music levels go up. So we position the playhead on that first keyframe for music levels. And I set a keyframe for strength here. I want 
want it to start at zero. So for all of this, it's going to be zero filter effect. And then I'm just going to jump forward a few frames to this last keyframe for the music. The music's at full volume. And now I want the strength to go all the way up. So I just drag it all the way up. Bam. And now that would look like this. If I could do it all over again, I'd be a fisherman. That's a really cool color grade. By the way, color correction and color grading aren't the same thing. And once you learn to color correct and color grade, you can take your videos to an entirely new level of cinematic epicness. By the way, to learn to color correct and color grade, you should watch this video right here, right now. It's really, really good.